can you undo what a macro changes? The simple answer is no, unless you know how to program changes and undoes. So let's use with a very simple database here and say you, you want to change these cells, multiply them by a certain factor, and then you decide that you want to undo that. So I'm going to make a macro that undoes a single macro change. And then later on, we will put a memory in the background. So I, I change this first, and then I change that, and finally I do this. So I did three steps, and I want to go back from change from this one to that one and that one. That is my second macro. And each time you want to undo changes in consecutive steps, that is Control Shift U. So what is the code in the background? The first one, a single undo. I, I called the subroutine single undo and I declare variables. And first I'm going to ask the user which range of cells do you want to change. That can be one cell, that can be multiple in one row, it can be discontiguous ones, it can be in several columns. We do that with the application.input box function and make sure that your last argument is set to 8. The last argument is the type argument. Don't put it in any other position, for the thing will not work. This returns a range, and O select was declared of the range type. By default, I put the selections address in there already, whatever the user had already selected. Then we select what the user selected already or has changed in his selection. And then, and that is the secret of the undo operation, we store that range O select, which is a two dimensional array. We store that in an array type kind of variable, V undo. V undo is of the variant type. A variant can hold anything. It can hold strings, numbers, booleans, etc. But it can also hold an array. So that V undo remember what the sit remembers what the situation was. Then we are going to change whatever is in that selected range. We use a regular input box, a VBA input box, so not the Excel input box, but the VBA input box. And we say we want to multiply, let's say, that range by 1.1. If it's not numeric, because you canceled the input box, then we exit the sub. Let's skip that step for now. And then we go through each cell in O select. And if that is numeric, then we multiply the value in O cell with the S factor, let's say 1.1, and that is the new value. If it's not numeric, because you also have included a label, then you don't want to multiply, of course. And then the famous question, do you want to undo the changes? If the user says yes, we want the old situation back. And what is the old situation? V undo knows that because it's like a memory. It has the array of O select in it. And we put that back in O select and we are done. Let's test that macro first. That is Control Shift S. Let's say I want to change that range. Control Shift S. That is the range we want. We, we can correct it. I can say, no, I really want this part. Then it will highlight that part. We multiply by 1.1. And this is the new situation. And now we ask the user, do you want to undo the changes? If I say yes, it will put the old values back through the variant array. These were the old factors. Now, multiple ones. Control shift m what does the fun function look like? First of all, we, we have to create two subroutines, and they both work with an array of variants. So first we had only one situation, but now we want memory for several changes. So we declare before any sub 
the array undo, open close parens, that means it's going to be an array, but make sure it's of the variant type, and we also declare a boolean variable, do we have an array already or not, yes or no, it starts as false. Then we start our sub multiple undo, we need variables, we ask the question again, what is the range you want to change, like we did before, we select that range in case it has been changed. Now we have to see, do we have already a variance array? If B array is false, then we have to set that undetermined array, we have to redim it to a two-dimensional array with two elements, with two indexes in the first dimension and one in the second dimension. Be aware that arrays are zero based, they start counting at zero, one, two. So zero, one or zero, zero, and we set B array to true. From now on we know that we have a redimmed array. Else we have to use the array that exists already, so we redim it, we add a new element to it, plus one, but don't forget the word preserve that makes sure that you don't lose what you had already. We don't redim the first dimension, that is still one like it was before, but now we have to find the last element in array undo for the second dimension, and we add one to it. So after three times changing, we set it to four elements. And if. Then we are going to put in that new element the value of O select. And in the second dimension, we are going to put the address of that change. So we remember two things, which were the values and which is the address. So later on, when you want to undo things, we are going to look in that address and we are going to store those values, correct? Then we do our changes, like we did before, there is nothing new about it. It was the same in the previous subroutine. And we tell the user you don't have to, of course, but to undo changes, use Control shift u What is Control shift u It is a shortcut to the subroutine undo changes. We declare a variable of the integer type, what is the last element in the array. U-bound finds the last index number in the second dimension. And we are going to change the range with this address, the last address of the change, which is in element 2, Sorry. and we replace that address with what is in element 0 there, of the first dimension, those were the values, so this is the address, and these are the values. So then the next step is, we select that range so the user knows what has been undone, and then we have to delete that last element in the memory, but we can only do that if we have more than, than one element. So we read them preserve array, but I last minus one. That means we just reset it minus the last entry, because that memory has been used already. Otherwise we say message box no more undo is left, and don't forget to set B array to false, so later on when you run this code again, it is going to say if B array is false, then we have to do this. Let's test it. I'm going to undo to change multiple ranges. Control Shift M this time. Yes, we change it. 
and we also change that last section. Control Shift M. So now we have two changed. I want to undo that. Control Shift U will first unchange this last section. Control Shift U, look at the last section. Undone. If we want to also do the the first step, Control Shift U, it is going to reset that back and it tells me there are no more undos left. So if I start a new change again later on, let's say I want to change this section plus that section. Okay it. And it will from now on automatically and I have only one step so if I do control shift U it will just change those guys and says I have no more undos left. This was not an easy one and you probably need more information especially about arrays. Arrays are, can be very complicated so you need much more help. I can't do this in this short video. So I developed three CD-ROMs and two books that tell you more about the background in Excel. You can find them at genesispc.com.